Hi, I'm Cedric from Ratings.com. In this video, we will show you how to set up and calibrate your Sony X900E. We will go over auto settings and how you can tweak them to your liking. Whether you watch movies, play HDR video games, or casually watch a TV in the living room. These settings should also work for the international variants, like the XE9000. First, let's go over which input you should use, since not all HDMI ports are the same on this TV. If you have an external sound system, you basically have two options. Either you use HDMI ARC, which is only present on port number 3, or the digital optical audio out. ARC is usually the better option, since you can control your sound system using the TV's remote. If you have a 4K HDR device, use either HDMI port number 2 or 3. The other ports do support 4K and HDR, but you will be limited by a lower frame rate. This is a little bit problematic if you have more than two HDR devices, especially if you have a receiver connected with ARC on port number 3. But you can buy an external HDMI switch to increase the number of ports. Before you start tweaking to settings, make sure you have enabled the enhanced format for HDR. There is no reason not to enable this, except if you are having compatibility issues on other devices. This increases the bandwidth of the HDMI port which is required if you want the full benefit of HDR. Now, go back to what you are watching. Keep in mind that the settings that you set will only apply to the HDMI port that you are on. If you have multiple devices connected, you will need to redo this for every HDMI port. Even the built-in apps have separated settings. Press the action menu button on the remote. Display is to list information about the input signal. Picture-in-picture picture lets you see another input at the same time, but it cannot be another HDMI input. It only works for over-the-air or component input. Picture off disable the display. This is useful if you want to play ambient music only. You should never use live football mode. Instead, you are better off doing manually the picture adjustment yourself, which we are going to get into soon. Wide mode is for changing the aspect ratio. Sony TVs are good at automatically detecting the correct ratio, so you shouldn't have to use that setting often. Sound adjustments is if you are using the TV internal speakers. If you have an external system or a pair of headphones, you can turn it on here. Sync menu is for Sony Bravia Sync, not the general HDMI CEC features. Now, let's get to picture adjustments. The first thing you should do is to change the picture mode. There are some differences between all of them, besides the different default presets. For example, the HDR tone mapping roll-off and the input lag change. For most usage, we recommend custom, since it has good presets and no options grayed out. For playing video games, game and graphics have the lowest input lag. Both display Chroma 444 fully. Game has a slightly softer upscaling, which most people prefer, but if you want a direct upscaling, use graphics. If you play video games and watch movies on the same input, simply use game for everything. There are some options disabled though, but we recommend to disable them anyway. In this video, we will continue with custom to be able to talk about every option. Auto picture mode tries to detect the input signal and change the mode accordingly. It's a cool feature, but we don't recommend using it since it can be wrong sometimes. Brightness isn't the same settings as most other TVs' brightness. On recent Sony TVs, it is the equivalent of their backlight. For this, it's really a personal preference, and it depends on the amount of lights in your room. Increasing it simply brightens the picture, without any downside to picture accuracy. Simply set it to something that is comfortable for your eyes. Color changes the saturation of the picture. 50 is the most accurate value from a reference point of view. If you don't care about accuracy, you can increase it to get the picture more pop. Light sensor changes the luminosity of the screen to match the ambient light in your room. It is useful if you watch a TV during the day and the night and don't want to keep changing the brightness in between. We recommend leaving it off though, for more control. Brightness is the same as before. For contrast, the higher the better. However, if you set it too high, it might clip the highlights. In our measurements, we found that 95 is a safe value. 
For a dark room calibration, we set the gamma to zero, but for a brighter room, you should increase it if you want to see more details in the shadows. Do not touch black level. In almost all cases, 50 is the best value. A lower value won't change how the pure black look. It will only crush the shadows. We recommend leaving black adjust off. Turning it on won't make the blacks deeper. It is a software-only processing that changes the levels of the shadows. Advanced Contrast Enhancer is also a software-only feature that won't change the actual contrast. It simply brightens the highlight. We recommend to leave it off. Auto Local Dimming is an actual hardware feature. It will darken the blacks. Set it too high unless you find that it lags a bit behind the picture or darkens the surrounding areas too much. Extended dynamic range is the opposite of local dimming, meaning that it brightens the white. For the best HDR performance, put it too high. If you find the picture too bright in the highlights though, turn it off. Color is the same one as before. Leave it to 50 for accuracy. Hue is more accurate at zero. Otherwise, it rotates the color wheel. Expert One is the most accurate color temperature, which is the closest to the 6500K, the color temperature all movies are mastered to. If you are not used to it though, you might find the picture too yellowish or warm. In that case, set it to something colder. But keep in mind, Expert One is the most accurate. Advanced Color Temperature is for more precise adjustments of the white balance. We don't recommend that you set these, except if you have a calibration tool. We posted the results of our calibration on our website. You can try it, but keep in mind that this varies per actual unit, so it might not work on yours. Leave Live Color off. This will oversaturate the content, which is fine if you want to give the picture more pop, but off is more accurate. Leave sharpness at 50 for a natural picture. This won't add any sharpness to content. Increasing it will give the look of more details in the picture, but it will introduce some artifacts. The same is true for reality creation. Leave it off for a more accurate picture, unless you want the appearance of more details in the picture. Mastered in 4K is only for Sony Blu-rays. It should be off for everything else. For the two noise reduction features, turn them on if you see too much noise in the picture. Random noise is for the old analog noise, which is rarely present now. Digital is for block noise artifacts that nearly all recent compression algorithms have. Turning it on works to clean some of them, especially in the shadows, but it will also soften the picture, so it is a trade-off. Smooth gradation is to correct the color bending issues. Off is the most accurate value. If you don't like color bends in the sky, turn it on but it might soften too much some gradients. Now for motion. Motion can get complex, so we recommend that you watch a motion series that we posted on YouTube a few months ago. In short, for movies, set it to true cinema and Cinemotion to high. This won't add a super pro effect, and it will remove the judder in 24p movies. If you want a max super pro effect, set it to smooth. For gaming, the smoothness slider is disabled but you can increase the clearness slider, which makes the screen flicker to clear up the motion. Not everyone likes the added flickering though. For video options, set everything to auto. These three settings are mostly if the signal you send to the TV doesn't have the appropriate metadata, and you want to force HDR, the video range, or the color space. So that's it. You can find the screenshots of all the settings we recommend on the website via the link below. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become a contributor and see you next time.